right, guys. It is an unbelievably, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in the paradise of, drum roll please, East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, back in Doomsday Chicken Coop. In East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, what the hell have I been through in the past week in Austin, Texas? Me and my little Texas dog. Sancho Panza, but it is Wednesday, Wednesday, March 22nd, 2017, so before I get out weeding this out of control garden, I'm going to do what I do every day, every Wednesday, and that's an attempt to bring you my climate change meltdown roundup rant, where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire and not a whole lot of stories uh, on the main headlines. I guess this is World Water Day. Let's all celebrate. I'm celebrating World Water Day by running my drip irrigation to water my starving little plants here in this beautiful organic garden. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I guess with all the stories about Ellen DeGeneres buying a new $45 million mansion and things like that, uh, we had to go over to the science pages, over to the science pages and get about two-thirds of the way down the science pages uh, to find just a few little, you know, just a little interesting tidbits, not nearly as interesting as Ellen DeGeneres' new $45 million mansion, but maybe, I guess, the editors at Yahoo News figured a couple of people on the planet might be interested in these stories, so. Uh, let's dive right into this one. I, I think this story, just from Business Insider, and good for, I mean, all kidding aside, Business Insider, uh, along with the Washington Post have recently become uh, one of the best environmental journals on the planet, uh, pretty much just summing up the year 2017 towards the bottom of the science page. <clears throat> Record-breaking climate change is pushing the world into uncharted territory. The record-breaking heat that made 2016 the hottest year ever recorded has continued into 2017, pushing the world into, quote, truly uncharted territory, according to the United Nations World Meteorological Organization. Um, the WMO's uh, assessment published on Tuesday reports unprecedented heat across the globe, exceptionally low ice at both poles, and surging sea level rise. There you go. Global warming is largely being driven by emissions from human activities. Huh. And even though the El Nino is waning, the extremes continue to be seen with temperature records tumbling in the U.S. in February and polar heat waves pushing ice cover to new lows. This is David Carlson, director of WMO's World Climate Research. <clears throat> Even without a strong El Nino in 2017, we are seeing other remarkable changes across the planet that are challenging the limits of our understanding of our climate system, we are now in truly uncharted territory. This is Jeffrey Cargill, a glaciologist at the University of uh, Arizona. Quote, Earth is a planet in upheaval due to human-caused changes in the atmosphere. In general, drastically changing conditions do not help civilization, which thrives 
on stability. And then, of course, they go in to blasting uh, the Donald Trump administration for burying its head up its ass, well, in the sand. Yes, this is Professor Sir Robert Watson, <clears throat> climate, distinguished climate scientist at the UK's University of East Anglia. Quote, our children and grandchildren will look back on the climate deniers and ask how they could have sacrificed the planet for the sake of cheap fossil fuel energy. Well, it's, it's very easy to uh, sacrifice the, uh, the planet for the sake of cheap fossil fuel energy. It's, it's this $2 gallon gas that allowed me to get in my gas-sucking truck and drive from uh, Austin, Texas to East Bumblefuck yesterday. That's how. Uh, anyway, this goes on and on. Good for, uh, good for business insider. Is there, a, is there a bottom line to this story? Uh, Anyway, more of the same, and I'm just going to touch base with the BBC's, this is their spin on this new uh, study from the WMO. Extreme and unusual climate trends continue after record 2016. In the atmosphere, the seas and around the poles. Climate change is reaching disturbing new levels across the earth. And they pretty much, uh, they pretty much just parrot everything uh, that the Business Insider story, just basically how we're all fucked. Uh, let's see their bottom line. Uh, oh, this is still back, back to that. Uh, now this is Phil, dot, climatologist Phil Williamson from the University of, of East Anglia. <clears throat> Quote, the, the WMO statement on the 2016 climate leaves no room for doubt. The much-hyped warming hiatus is over, and all that missing heat energy did not go missing at all. Instead, that heat went into the ocean, and we got much of it back again last year. Human-driven climate change is now an empiric, empirically verifiable fact combining year-to-year -year variability with the consequences of our release of extra greenhouse gases. Those who dispute this are not skeptics, but anti-science deniers. Yes, and uh, talking about consequences of uh, the release of extra greenhouse gases, this little story buried away on the bottom of the science pages, obviously nowhere mentioned uh, anywhere in the, in the regular headlines. Anybody who does not understand this. Thousands of huge gas bubbles appear in the ground and they are about to explode. There you go. Thousands of huge bulges have appeared in the ground in Siberia, and scientists believe that up to 7,000 bubbles full of ancient gas are about to explode. <clears throat> the bubbles are thought to be caused by global warming, which causes permafrost beneath the ground to thaw and release methane. With these vast 
when these vast bubbles explode, they leave huge craters in the landscape and release methane gas into the atmosphere. Yes, uh, this is one of these Russian climatologists. I love this quote. <clears throat> we need to know which bumps are dangerous and which are not. Yes, uh, scientists are working on detecting and structuring signs of potential threat from all of these methane farts. Like the maximum height of a bump and pressure that the earth can withstand. <laughs> Oh God, guys! All, all, all you can do is uh, is laugh about this. I'm coming back to this story for my uh, quote of the day because it's worth its own separate rant by a climatologist, Sophie Lewis. I'm worried having a baby will make climate change worse. So we'll get back to Sophie. Okay, let's look back on February. Earth just had its second warmest February on record. As the saying goes, another month, another disconcerting report from top climate agencies. Yes, uh, last month was Earth's second hottest February on record since at least 1880, according to both NASA and NOAA. And at the same time, the extent of sea ice in the Arctic and in Antarctica hit record monthly lows, the all-time record low sea ice in the history of record keeping. So you can take a wild guess. I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, the, these climate change deniers are going to use this as an example that the earth is cooling because you can guess the first hottest February in history would have been February 2016. And so now it was cooler so obviously the planet is cooling, not warming. D, D, D. Okay, in celebration of World Water Day, <clears throat> we have the U United Nations Children Fund, you know, UNICEF, their report looking at children. One in four children will live with water shortages by 2040. Approximately one in four children <clears throat> worldwide will live in regions with extremely scarce water resources by 2040, UNICEF said in a report released today. Uh, in research released on World Water Day, the UN's Children's Agency warned that in just over two decades, nearly 600 million children will be living in areas with severely limited safe water sources as population growth and surging demand for water clash with the effects of climate change. Uh, more than 36 countries are already currently enduring extreme water stress with water demand exceeding available renewable water supplies. There you go. Okay. What else we got in my little... From water shortages to fires and massive floods could affect millions, and they're talking about this week. Uh, here is what's going on in Colorado this week. More than one, 
more than 1,000 homes were evacuated Sunday near Boulder, Colorado in the line of a huge wildfire, while in California, some five inches of rain are expected this week near the battered Oroville Dam. There you go, from Colorado to California, if the wildfires don't get you, the floods will. Okay, what is on the mind of Stephen Hawking this week? Stephen Hawking expresses concern over Donald Trump's environmental policies. <clears throat> Famed physicist Stephen Hawking expressed his concern over President Donald Trump's environmental policies during an interview on Good Morning Britain. Take it away, Stephen. <clears throat> Quote, Climate change is one of the great dangers we face, and it is one we can Prevent. Climate change affects America badly, so tackling it should <laughs> win him votes for his second term, God forbid. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> Hawking who is a recipient of the prestigious U.S. Franklin Medal for Science, asked for the removal of the Environmental Protection Agency Chief Scott Pruitt. Yes, Trump should replace Scott Pruitt as the, at the EPA, he said. <clears throat> yes, anyway, the UK's leading physicist and cosmologist mentioned in the interview that he no longer feels welcome <clears throat> in the U.S. anymore. So, and I love the question, uh, I love it when they ask a question in a, head, in a headline. This is Popular Mechanics asking the question, what will happen if Trump guts NASA's Earth science budget? Well, what, what do you think will happen? Uh, let's get to the bottom line of, of what will happen about uh, the, the heavily politicized climate debate. Here is one notion that ought not to be partisan. This is our planet. We want the best for it now and in the future, and it's good to know what's happening to the place we live. That goes for the Earth's climate just as much as it does for stopping solar storms from crippling our communications technology or spotting a doom asteroid headed this way so we can figure out what to do about it. Who runs the satellites and telescopes we use to watch our world and how we pay for them is a worthy topic for a grown-up discussion. But whatever you think about how much the Earth's climate is or is not changing, the United States cannot afford to look deeper into the void just to avoid the conversation about what is happening right here. Thank you very much, Popular Mechanics, for spelling that out. Let's go over there to China, where we see climate change makes deadly China pollution worse. 
Global warming has boosted the frequency and severity of deadly air pollution in northern China, scientists said Monday, uh, as toxic particles in the air caused nearly a million premature deaths in the country every year. Uh, and the trend is set to worsen if warming continues unabated. Yep, 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 yep. From China to Peru, you know, where they, they keep talking about the El Nino in, in Peru. I, I, I don't get it. Uh, are we or are we not still in the old El Nino, coming into a new El Nino? Uh, so I don't know if they're talking about just the old one uh, hasn't left or the new one's already here in Peru. Have you seen these damn pictures from Peru this week? Good God. Peru struggles with devastating El Nino flooding. Peruvians struggled on Sunday to cope with avalanches, mudslides, and extensive flash flooding caused by torrential downpours and forecasters predicted still more rain ahead this week, prolonging the country's woes. The highly unusual rains follow a series of storms that have struck hard along Peru's northern coast with voracious waters inundating hospitals and leaving some small villages isolated. I guess the entire public water system in Lima, Peru, a city of 8 million people, they just just drop in there. there they, I don't know if they mean the entire city is without public tap water today. Jesus, the storms are being caused by a warming of the surface waters in the Pacific Ocean and are expected to continue for at least another two weeks. So now we go from uh, South America over to Somalia uh, in El Nino showing up again blaming for the drought. Somalia land drought, a kind of nightmare and a security threat. Do you think so? Prolonged drought in Somalia has killed between 65 in Somalia land which is northern Somalia, Somalia land has killed between 65 and 80 percent of the semi-autonomous region's livestock, creating conditions that are the worst time in our lives and could threaten regional security. Uh, yes, good. Lord, they have never seen anything like this. And so next uh, to Somalia, let's look at Kenya this week. Fearing disease, Kenyans burn animal carcasses as drought deepens. <clears throat> Villagers in northern Kenya have begun to burn piles of animal carcasses hoping to head off an outbreak of disease as their livestock starve to death in the region's worst drought in years. The smell of death hangs heavily over Lake Turkana and dried animal corpses dot the cracked mud where the lake has receded, leaving boats stranded on the dry land. 
There you go. But uh, we're going to round wind up here uh, this week's climate uh, meltdown roundup rant with a Hollywood ending. Climate outlook improves. Climate outlook improves as fewer coal plants built. Led by cutbacks in China and India, construction of new coal-fired power plants is falling worldwide, improving chances that climate goals can be met despite earlier pessimism three limp dick mainstream environmental groups said on Wednesday. Oh God, guys, you, you know, these goddamn uh, limp dick uh, mainstream environmentalists, and this is Sierra Club and, and Greenpeace weighing in on how it is not too late to save this planet. But, uh, I'm gonna wind up this week's climate change meltdown roundup rant. I need to get out here in my garden uh, and spend a few hours. But, uh, I'm debating on whether or not, maybe later on today, I will just bring you the non-climate uh, end times headlines for the day about the way, even without heading directly into a burning lake of fire, even without climate change, how this planet is heading into a brick wall, or in this case, an adobe wall, at 67,000 miles an hour on this gorgeous spring day in the end times as we celebrate Ellen's purchase of her new $45 million mansion. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.